And that would be my seventh application to Lockheed. <laughs> I hope to God they gave me something. All right, so can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Oh, you should post the uh, the link to the Eagle download in the chat for everyone who doesn't have it yet. You probably get that going before the presentation starts. Vegas. Oh, he's got his audio muted. Hello? Oh, there you go. All right. I can, yeah. Okay. We're good to go. It, it, it looked like... Yep. Oh, yeah. I was... Yeah, my setup was... 
odd because I was like, I had to connect my headphones and stuff. But you could um, you could present window and um, have only your presentation window like uh, shared while you have the dual screen or something like that, or just like split screen. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm just going to share my entire screen just for the ease of use. Cool, cool. We can wait for Bye. maybe a few more minutes. But um, how have you oh. been? I, I, I've been pretty well. Are you still in Vegas? Cool. Um, I'm actually living in Boise now. Good for you. So, you finally got out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the rest of us will be there soon. Some yeah. Get out of the damn desert. I know. It's it's so nice, right? Because I I've uh lived in Las Vegas all my life and it's nice to live somewhere where it's it's not 120 degrees during the summer. Dude, tell <laughs> me how the weather is right now cuz it's still in the 90s over here. I, <laughs> so, I think I I think in the morning it was around I'd say uh 54 degrees and then uh, oh, dude, you're making me jealous. And and then during the day, it got up to like 70, 72, 75. Oh, so, God, one awesome. day. So close. We're all one so day. close. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's also really, uh, it, it's it's nice to see greenery, right? Because coming from, oh, the, yes. coming yeah. from the, <laughs> the desert, you, you don't see much of greenery. Yeah. <clears throat> So how's UNLV with the whole COVID situation? Is <laughs> that weird? Uh, it's a good one. It's uh, it's been a, it's been an adventure so far. Handled just about as well as you think it possibly could be for UNLV. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I I just received an email that the spring of 2020 graduates will have in in the fall of 2020 graduates will have a online graduation oh thank <laughs> god dude i didn't even want to go in person anyways <laughs> yeah that's a relief for me quite honestly oh yeah all right well just 6 11 i think we got a uh, we got everyone here we're ready to go all right now okay so uh this is a presentation that i prepared um a couple months ago um, for a senior design two class. And uh, Dr. Greg wanted me to give a uh, presentation um, and also a tutorial on how to use uh, Autodesk Eagle. Um, and so I put together this presentation with Dr. Greg and I gave this presentation um, back in March, right before everyone was sent home before, sp before spring break. And so, um, what exactly is a printed circuit board? Um, a printed circuit board is a board where components can be soldered uh, such that after soldering the components, they are connected by copper traces. Mm -hmm. And so, um, as you can see here, this is a really simple single-sided printed circuit mm -hmm. board that was milled using a uh, Bantam Tools uh, desktop PCB milling machine. And so, um, as you can see here, you can see each pin uh, is soldered to the board, and each pin is then connected to another pin via a copper trace. Now, as you note here, this is um, an electronic piano uh, circuit, and um, later we will be uh, creating our own uh, version of this printed circuit board. Um, and so why might you want to use uh, or design a printed circuit board? And it offers a more permanent solution for a finalized circuit. It helps reduce it a smaller size, and it's easy to produce multiple copies. And so um, how is a PCB made? Well, essentially what happens is um, you have some sort of substrate, um, and there's different uh, materials that are used um, to, to provide an insulator between the two copper layers. Um, and then what happens is 
you have two additional uh, layers on top of uh, the copper. And so normally the copper is etched out, but you also have two layers that are not seen in this primitive simple PCB. And that is a solder mask and the silk screen. And so a solder mask, um, so if, if, if you ever get a PCB in the PCB kit, or if you order one online, you might notice that there is this material um, on top of the copper. And what that uh, material does is it prevents solder from adhering to the copper. And so when you have a board like this with no solder mask, it's very difficult to solder, especially this IC here, because um, the solder can easily jump to places where you don't want it to go. And then a silk screen is um, basically an ink that's printed on top of the PCB. So that way you can place labels or logos or, or whatever you would like to print. And so um, here's a wide array of uh, PCBs that I've uh, designed. Um, and so uh, later uh, we are going to go through making this PCB here. Um, and if you take uh, CP301 or 310, in, uh, at UNLV, you might use this board. Um, and then th this was my uh, junior design board. And so what software uh, should you use to design PCBs? Um, there's many types of uh, software that is available. You have free PCB, you have uh, dip trace, you have easy EDA. Um, and I find that Eagle is the best option available uh, for students uh, because as a student you get uh, full access to Eagle for three years. Uh, it's not the free version, it's, it's the full version of Eagle. And so another reason for using Eagle is the strong ecosystem. Um, for instance, you have um, different websites such as SparkFun or Arduino or if you buy a part off of a DigiKey or, or Mauser, uh, they have um, Eagle models online. And so uh, you, you have that um, easy use where, let's say you're making um, some sort of microcontroller project and um, you wanna have an Arduino um, on your PCB, well, you can actually go to Arduino's website and download the Eagle board file and, and even the schematic and you can actually easily modify it. And, the, uh, and another amazing thing about using Eagle, Eagle is uh, because it's such a widely used uh, piece of software, there's tons of support. And so what kind of prerequisites should you have before you decide to make a PCB? And obviously, a PCB is a, there's, there's a sense of finality. So you wanna make sure that your, your circuit that you wanna put on your PCB um, works and you wanna make sure it works well. And so um, maybe you could uh, come up with a, a working uh, simulation and, and some sort of spiced um, software. And then you might want to implement it on a breadboard and verify that it works and then you want to maybe solder it together and, and make sure it still works so you can use a proto board and solder it together. And then you, you can finally get to your final step of making a PCB. And this is very good because it saves you money because if you just think that the circuit works but you don't know for sure and you pay money to get a, a PCB fabricated, then it comes back and there's something wrong with it, then you're gonna have to uh, pay more money uh, to, to have a, a new version of the PCB. And it takes a longer period of time. And so the first step, once you get to the final um, uh, iteration of your circuit is creating a schematic. And so um, what's nice about Eagle is they have this um, ecosystem where there's tons of different devices, and we'll get, we'll, we'll get into this later. 
Um, and each device has a symbol in the footprint. And so there's, you can actually download free Eagle libraries online, but let's say you find um, a very unique um, part that doesn't have a pre-existing footprint and symbol, um, then you're gonna have to design it yourself. And so uh, what you can do is you can look at the data sheet and make your footprint, and then you can make a symbol. And once, once, once you have all the devices that you want to include into your project, and you've created all of the respective symbols and footprints for, for all the devices, then you can wire together a schematic. And so the reason why wiring together a schematic is important, especially for complex designs, is that there is a rat nest that basically connect, you, you can see visually, and you'll see later, uh, all the nodes that need to be connected. Um, if you were to design this imager microcontroller board um, without first drawing a schematic, it would be a headache. And so also another very important thing that uh, should be uh, noted is that there's two different types of devices um, that, that are common when it comes to printed circuit boards. Uh, you have surface mount devices and you have through-hole devices. And so surface mount devices actually mount directly onto the board and they are soldered on um, copper, foot, uh, copper pads on one layer. Whereas a through-hole device has an actual drilled hole in the PCB where you can stick the through-hole device in and solder. Through-hole devices are easier to solder, but they're bigger and uh, surface mount devices are a little bit more difficult to solder. Um, but it does give you a smaller product in the end. Sometimes you, you might have to use a microscope to uh, solder surface mount devices, especially uh, microcontrollers that have like 40 pins. And so I talked about this earlier, um, how you can uh, find a part online. Uh, let's, let's, for instance, this is, a, a digi key listing, um, and uh, you can actually click on this data sheet, and this is a different part here, but this this shows you that in the data sheet you're going to have a footprint. Sometimes they refer to it as a landing, and this gives you a recommended idea of how you want to uh, create your footprint and um, an eagle. And so here, all these measurements here were taken and I created a footprint that would represent that. Now, what's very interesting is I mentioned the uh, solder mask layer. The solder mask layer in Eagle, as you can see, is this white uh, line that, that goes through here and you have these oblique lines going through. Now, what's interesting is with the solder mask layer, it is what is referred to as a negative layer. So wherever you see the solder mask layer in most PCB software, that is where the solder mask does not go. Now, also another important thing that I should note that I did not find out until um, pre pretty well into my um, uh, PCB designing uh, career is that um, a lot of websites such as DigiKey uh, have EDEA and CAD models. And so, so if your um, part has a CAD model, you might as well download it because then you don't have to go through this uh, terrible step of, of creating the footprint. So you, you click that link and then you select um, what software you're using and you can actually download uh, the footprint and the symbol. And so, um, one thing that I've, I've noticed is sometimes uh, for a senior design project, someone might be using um, some sort of transistor or, or something that draws a lot of current and they have these really thin traces and, um, and that can be an issue. And uh, the reason being is because with a, with a thin trace like that, it increases the resistivity uh, from one point to another point. In addition to that, um, your trace can actually burn up. And so a PCB trace can be defined by the trace's width, length, and thickness. 
as you can see in this diagram here. And the trace will have a resistance according to this formula here with these variable definitions. Um, as a PCB designer, you will only have control of the length and the width of the trace. Therefore, if one assumes the, the, this assumption here and assumes that uh, all, all these things are such as resistivity, such as um, the temperature coefficient of the material, um, are, are fixed, you can actually come down to this simple equation here, um, where R, R square uh, basically refers to, it's referred to as the sheet resistance of the material. And so as you can see here is the wider your trace is, the, uh, the smaller amount of resistance you have between two points. And so uh, we can actually model this as uh, this simple circuit here. We have some sort of load and we have a wire connecting the positive terminal of a voltage supply to our load, and then we have a wire connecting um, the negative terminal of the power supply to our load as well. And so um, you can, let's say that we assume that, um, um, that RW and RW2 uh, are certain sizes, we can actually calculate the effective resistance, but as as you can see here, the conclusion is that the VD is proportional to the width of the trace. And so, if you have five volts on this side, um, if 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 you design your traces ineffectively, then you could actually have maybe like 4.5 volts here, and so you don't actually have five volts delivered to the load. And here you can also see that uh, VD is inversely proportional to the length of the trace. Therefore, you want to make your traces as wide as possible, especially your power traces. Furthermore, uh, you have decoupling capacitors. And so, as, as you may remember, a decoupling capacitor uh, passes high frequencies. And so sometimes decoupling uh, capacitors are referred to as bypass capacitors. So let's say you have um, some noise on your voltage supply and this noise travels uh, to this node here. Now what will happen is the high frequency noises will actually be bypassed, uh, will bypass the load and go through this capacitor here and uh, that way, uh, at this node here, you don't experience the, the noise you experience on this node. Now, also another uh, useful thing to know about decoupling capacitors is that they store energy. And so let's say that um, you, you have like 10 microfarads here, and uh, this ramps up to five volts, and five volts gets, charges this capacitor here. And so there is energy stored in this capacitor, and the energy is one half CV squared. And so let's say that your load all of a sudden draws a lot of current. If you do not have a capacitor here, this node will drop and then go back up as soon as the current um, spike uh, is, is gone. But with, with a capacitor here of sufficient size, you can actually um, prevent uh, this, this node from dropping. And so here uh, we assume that the PCB copper sheet resistance is one ohm per square. And both traces are 100 millimeters in length and two millimeters in width. Now, this, this brings up an important um, uh, topic and that is millimeters and mils. Um, when I was first designing printed circuit boards, I was very confused between millimeters and mils. I was, I was like, isn't a mil a millimeter? No, a mil is uh, in the imperial system, and I believe it's a thousandth of an inch, and the millimeter is obviously in the metric system. So what is the voltage across the microcontroller if the microcontroller's resistance is one kilo ohms? So you can actually uh, calculate that the resistance would be around 50 ohms. And as you can see here, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. You have a, a decreased voltage um, at a node from the load.
And so the conclusion is make power traces wide. And uh, regarding all other traces, um, obviously you can uh, ideally want to make them as wide as possible. And so you can actually um, calculate uh, the, the resistance of a trace using these uh, PCB uh, trace calculators. And so uh, you can input uh, various parameters such as the, the, the kind of current that's going to be traveling through the trace. For instance, you have 10 amps. You have uh, your thickness here. And um, for instance, for 10 amps, you need a, 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 you need a trace that is 368 mils in width. And that's, that's a really large trace. But here's some recommended trace sizes for normal use. Uh, power traces, maybe 50 mils. Signal traces, 25 mils. Between ICs and pads, maybe 10 to 15 mils. But I just wanted to uh, really um, point that out uh, because uh, sometimes uh, when people are first starting, they don't really understand that some traces need to be wider than other traces. And so in addition to that, when it comes to traces, it is best to have um, a trace that uh, whose angle is greater than 90 degrees. And if you have um, a, a PCB trace that has an acute angle, it can actually cause issues with um, electromagnetic coupling where you can actually um, cause noise and different issues. And so, so as you can see here, this is, this is an example here of what not to do. Notice all the acute angles of the traces. And so um, in addition to traces, you also have polygons. Polygons are essentially just fills that fill around a certain area. And so um, polygons are actually very useful for um, uh, ground and uh, power planes, and we'll get to that later. Now, we also have something on the PCB called a via. And so um, what we're going to be doing today is a two-layer PCB. And so a, a, two a via within the context of a two-layer PCB is essentially a connection from one side to the other side. Uh, if you have more than uh, two layers, you can actually have what's known as a buried via, a via that connects two eternal layers, or even a blind via. And so uh, before you design a PCB, it's maybe good to sketch out the little floor plan of, of where um, certain parts may go. Uh, this is especially useful for larger, more complex designs. Good versus bad layout. And so, um, as you can see here, we have two different types of PCBs. Now, can anyone uh, indicate which PCB the, on the left or the right they think is better? On the right is better. And why do you think it's better? Um, I see some uh, complicated and probably like crossing over wires on the left side. Yeah, and so on the left side, notice how all the traces are very thin, which is, it's not good for uh, power delivery. Um, if enough current is flowing through these really thin traces, they can burn up and your design is, is no more. Um, but notice on the right side, notice that uh, you actually have really thick uh, power uh, traces. In addition to that, we have power and ground uh, planes implemented. And so um, these are the different issues of, of, of this uh, uh, layout here. And, and in addition to that, you have inefficient use of space and poor placement of components. And so this is another good or bad layout, but um, this is very similar to the, layout, the, the PCB layout uh, that we saw on the left. And this is this is um, a, a printed circuit board that was actually created, and obviously the issue with this is you have a poor use of space. Um, you have a lot of uh, acute angles, which could could cause issues, 
And uh, in addition to that, you have power traces that are um, in not good areas. Now, also another thing to note is this footprint here is actually a DC jack. Um, and so uh, this can actually cause an issue because uh, how are you gonna plug this in? Now it may sound stupid, but uh, the first PCB that I made, um, I, I, for whatever reason, I put a USB port right smack dab in the middle of the board. And, and then I, I, I don't know why that I didn't, you know, catch it earlier, but <laughs> uh, I, I got the board back and there was just a, a USB port in the middle of the board that I couldn't connect anything to. And so I actually had to solder some wires to it and it was just ugly. So, so just note that if you have any connections, make sure to put it on the edge. I know it sounds, you know, obvious, but I've made that mistake and I thought I'd point that out. Um, oh, and also um, another reason why you should be concerned about the uh, space or the size of the board is that a larger board is, is, is more expensive and a smaller board is cheaper. Now, let's say you have um, like a triangle shaped board or let's say a circle shaped board or some obscure shaped board or maybe like some sort of Christmas tree shaped board. Um, how do PCB uh, companies calculate the cost of that board? Uh, the cost is calculated by the smallest uh, square that can be drawn, or smallest rectangle, I should say, that can be drawn around that figure. So that's another thing to note. Um, some last comments. And so uh, consider the heating of your components. If you have um, some sort of transistor that's, that's switching fast or some sort of voltage regulator, your, your parts could actually heat up and uh, you may need heat sinks. Um, also, let's say you have um, a trace and it just goes off in one direction and it, it, it doesn't connect to anything. It doesn't obviously make sense to have that, um, but an issue of that is it can actually come actually with air frequencies. And so, Make sure tracks go to the exact center of the pads and the components, and also consider having two ground planes. If you do decide to have two ground planes, make sure to place periodic vias to the connected two ground planes. This improves heat dissipation and it ensures good ground connection. A ground plane and a power plane is another option that you can have. Um, and we can get to that later when we're designing our PCB. Um, and I've noticed that the ground and power plane helps when routing the complex designs because you don't have to worry about connecting all the ground and, and power um, pins. Remember, PCB price is determined by the size of the board. Make your board as small as possible. And so now, uh, now that we've talked about some basics regarding PCB design, uh, a question may arise, and that question is, what do I do now? And where do I go to have my PCB manufactured? You can go, um, you know, you can type in PCB, get, you know, PCB manufacturer on Google and, and, and thousands of options will, will appear. Um, but it should be noted that the cheapest option is not always the best option. For instance, this uh, JLC PCB offered 20 PCBs, of course this is a small PCB, but 20 of these PCBs for around $10. And I was excited, I was like, wow, that's a great price, but look at this. The issue is that it didn't have the solder mask layer. And so you have this really tiny um, surface mount device that you have to solder onto the board but there is no solder mask layer, so the solder just adheres to everything. And so it's a very difficult thing to do. So, so maybe if you're just using through-hole components, a, a cheaper board may be best for you. But if you have surface mount components, I'd recommend going for uh, like a, a, a better, more um, higher quality 
PCB manufacturer. One PCB manufacturer that I feel like is is um, a great balance between price and quality is Oshpark. Um, and so uh, you can clearly see the difference in the quality on the left and the right. And so now we're gonna to get to the Eagle demonstration. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Um, is there like a minimum and maximum width or like the length that your PCB could have? Like a, a, like a manufacturer's guide or something? Yeah, and so uh, depending upon which PCB company you go for, usually they have um, different specifications of you know how large the board can be or how what how thin a trace can be um or uh for instance uh let's say you uh, you have two drills that are really really close to one another uh you, you have different um um rules design rules that you can't violate um when you're designing um a, a pcb and so um, we'll get into that later when we uh, demonstrate uh, the Eagle software. And so, um, let's okay. So let's let's assume that everyone has downloaded um, these these three files, and and those three files were in this link here. Um, now you don't have to have had done this. Um, and, and downloaded Eagle and installed it. But if you want to follow along, it's a good idea to do, or you can just sort of take notes and do it later. Um, I have a quick question. If I can yeah. interrupt, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, so most of the uh, PCBs that I've seen or I actually worked with have used a, uh, a uh, non-curved, uh, I guess, trace layout, I guess is the best way to put it. So I understand on the slide that you said, uh, you know, poor, better, best kind of thing. What is what, or I guess, what is the reason behind uh, everything having some fixed angle, uh, or operating? You know, the trace is operating at some fixed angle. Is that set by the manufacturer? Is that just an easier way of producing the board itself, or uh, you know, why can't all the traces be curved in and of itself? Why why do they all have some fixed? Yeah, um, and, and and the cool thing about Eagle is, you, if you want all your traces to be curved, um, you can actually do that. Um, but um, you can actually, uh, in, instead of having the curved angle, you can actually have it such that all of, such your traces can only angle at 120 degrees. And so, so we'll, we'll get we'll get into that. But but obviously, uh, uh, you know, if you want to have a curved uh, trace, you can go for a curved trace. Um, now, if you look at PCBs from like the 1970s and 1980s, it's very interesting. Um, because they actually have um, curved um, traces. Because the, the the reason behind that, I was actually looking at this a little before the meeting, is because they were actually hand drawn. And so, um, let's see where we are. Like were they hand etched, or I guess the traces were they were handmade. Yeah, they were handmade. And so, okay. and so as, with, with the advent of um, computer-aided design, they sort of switch to the um, 120 uh, angle method. But if is there some utility in that, in like ease of manufacturing, I guess? I, I, I assume that, that it'd be easier to, to create because, right. um, because, because if, if, if you ever uh, drill a PCB, oh, shoot, no. If you ever drill a PCB, um, look at this, right? So what happens is uh, the, the drill uh, is, is going along a, a single direction. And I, I, I could imagine that manufacturing-wise, it's probably simpler just to go in straight lines, right, that versus right. a curve. So, um, but, but that, that's a really great question. And I, I, th I think that was, that was a, an amazing question. So now we're going to go to um, what exactly we're going to be making to them. And so we're gonna be making a electronic panel PCB. And you can actually uh, see all different sorts of uh, variations of the same circuit online. Um, 
But if, if you want to know how it works, I'd recommend looking at the LM55 data sheet. And here it talks about um, the A stable operation. And so A stable means that it's just going to oscillate um, uh, from one state to another state. And so uh, the important thing here is that you have a capacitance and two resistors. These two resistors are right here. I mean, right here and right here. And uh, depending upon uh, the, the resistor, resistor A, resistor B, and, and the capacitance, you can actually calculate the frequency of the oscillation. And this is in the LM55 data sheet. And so you can actually um, create a little piano here where you basically just copy this circuit here from the data sheet, and then um, here's your fixed RA resistance, and then here's your RB resistance here. And you can actually add a potentiometer here to actually tune the, the piano. And then uh, when you push a switch here, um, essentially what happens is the resistance of RB is whatever the, the resistance of the pod is plus R7. And if you push this button here, then it's going to be um, uh, th this resistance all the way down to here. Now, what's interesting is um, this this instrument is a monotonal instrument. You can't push two two notes down because let's say you you push key seven and key one. What will happen is uh, the current will follow the path of least resistance and it will actually bypass. This 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 press here, and it will go through here. Um, so so that's basically what this is, okay. And notice that I've also uh, included a uh, voltage regulation circuitry. And so here we have a DC jack, and then uh, we have a, a diode here, and then we have a, a decoupling capacitor for seventy eight oh five. Um, and then we have another decoupling capacitor here uh, to ensure that the, um, that the uh, as I've explained before, to ensure that uh, any ripple is removed, any noises is removed, and also in case there's any current spikes um, drawn uh, from this IC here. Um, and then we have a little switch. And we switch it down, it turns off, we switch it up, it turns on, and then we ha even have a little light. Um, and so if you want to go ahead and solder this yourself, um, I've included links to all the different parts that you might need to, to actually create the board that you make. And so um, now that we can, now what we can do is we can open up this IEEE workshop library. And this is one of the three files uh, that are right here. And so, you open it up, and this is an example of uh, Eagle Library. And I um, curated this library. Um, and so this, this every component that we need to make our electronic uh, piano is found here. And so, for instance, each this is what I was talking about earlier. Each device has a footprint and a symbol. The symbol is, is when you're doing a schematic capture, and then the footprint is for when you're making the PCB. And so you can actually go through here, and, and some parts even have a 3D package. Um, and there's actually software available where you can view your PCB in, in 3D. Um, and so, for instance, uh, this is, uh, this does not have a 3D package, but the, import, the important thing to know is that you need a footprint and a symbol. And so you can actually go through here and see what each um, device is. And um, let's say that uh, you need to create or edit or modify any one of these uh, views. You can actually go in there and, and edit it. But for the sake of time, we're going to jump straight to uh, a, a complete schematic. And so we're opening up the piano schematic right now. 
And this is the, the, the schematic that I explained earlier. And um, I connected everything uh, accordingly. And uh, this is the first step that uh, you should do when, when you create a, like a PCB that's of you know, higher complexity. Um, now you might wonder what these are. These are um, basically drill holes or standoff holes. And so these have no relation to the, uh, to the function of the circuit, but um, this is actually um, important if you want to have a standoff. Now, before we get to the, the PCB um, design, uh, you, you might wonder what, what this is like uh, once, once you make it. And I actually have a, a, a finished version right here. And, and so, as you can see here, you have a, a little DC jack here, and then you can flip it on, the light turns on, and then you can actually play it. And you can even tune it with the little pot. Here, let's see if I can tune it. So you can make R2D2 sounds. Um, so, so it's 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 a fun little um, project, um, and the DC jack is 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 nice. Uh, so that way you can bring it anywhere with you. So that way you don't have to have a a bench power supply. Um, yeah, Tanner. Uh, real quick, is there any reason you used a series resistance instead of a parallel resistance to be able to actually play can, uh, multiple notes at the same time? Yeah. Um, I guess what was your thought process behind that? Well, if 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 you had a parallel resistance, it would it would actually um, the the resistances would combine in parallel. So so the right. two note the two notes wouldn't be playing to independently of each other. It would be like its own unique note. But but oh uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. That. <laughs> sorry. So, no, but 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 that that might be interesting. So so you could actually uh, <coughs> modify the schematic to 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 you know maybe implement that kind of option. Um, and so, um, right here we have the completed schematic, and um, this 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 can take some time because before you get to this step, you have to. Uh, cr create all the devices, and maybe the devices are already in a free Eagle library. Maybe you get them from from uh, DigiKey or um, Ultra Librarian, um, or maybe you have to make it your own, uh, make your own footprints. But uh, you connect everything together, and then we move to this button here, and it says Generate Switch to Board, and so. Um, it's going to ask us, do we want to create from schematic? We're going to hit yes. And so um, here we can see the basic outline of a board. And so this black portion represents um, represents uh, the board. Uh, this 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 uh, line here obviously uh, represents the the border of the board, and so here we see all the parts that 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 it will take to make our uh, little piano PCB, and so um, this is the rat nest that I was referring to earlier. Notice all the little lines and and how everything is. Is 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 placed? Um, all the nets are, are 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 have a line connecting them, and so those lines indicate that at some point throughout this uh, PCB design process, we need to connect this pin to that pin, and so you can just go straight to the PCB design, but you could actually make an make an, uh, a mistake by. Uh, accidentally connecting something that you should and or not connecting something. So this, this sort of keeps you, make sure that you're, you're uh, doing everything that's, that's correct. And so you can actually move each part to um, the board. And notice, since this is a standoff, 
uh, the black is gone. And so, so this indicates a hole that will be placed. And so, um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to sort of uh, orientate everything uh, to 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 uh, to, to uh, you know a placement that makes sense. And so, uh, when you're moving your device around, uh, you can actually right click and you can actually flip it around like this. Um, and so. Remember my my mistake of my first board. I put a, a jack in the middle of the board. That's not a good idea. We want it on the edge of the board. And so, so there's the jack. And so now, uh, let's let's take care of our uh, voltage regulation system. And so here's our 7805. Now notice the cool thing about this footprint here. And this footprint was in a free Eagle library. Is that you stick your 7805 chip in, and you can screw it to the board. And uh, if you want, you can even put thermal paste uh, in between the board and the the IC, and it will the board itself will sort of act like a heat sink. So, so so that that's 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 if 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 you're going to use um, uh, devices that are uh, going to generate heat. That's an option to consider. Um, and so um, one thing that you might note is that uh, you actually have uh, an origin on each device. Like I can't pick, it up, pick the device up here. I have to pick it up from the origin in order to move it. So if, if you ever find... Um, find uh, a device and you're having a difficult time moving it, uh, chances are that um, you, you could um, actually uh, not be clicking the origin. Now, notice here how I want to line this diode up perfectly with, with this pin here, but I can't really do that. And so you actually have uh, this grid system. And so, uh, the, the grid up here is this coarse grid, and the grid down here is this fine grid. And so you can actually switch between the coarse grid and the fine grid by pushing the Alt key. And so if we uh, zoom in here, we can actually see that, that the device is moving along the coarse grid. The origin is moving along the coarse grid. But if we push Alt, we have a f the finer grid, so we can actually uh, orientate everything um, with a greater greater degree of accuracy. Now, um, this is the most tedious part of of your PCB design, trying to figure out um, a method to make sure that everything is, is as compact as possible, make sure everything uh, makes sense. Um, here's our switch. We probably want to have our switch on the edge of the board or maybe right here. Um, now I'm going to go through this in a pretty quick um, uh, manner, uh, just, just for the effort of time, because you can actually uh, spend quite a while uh, fine-tuning everything and making sure everything is uh, uh, how you like it. Now, um, the only thing that really matters with this board is that you make sure that all the keys are placed in uh, a sequential order because you don't want to have um, you don't want to have switch one and switch three right next to each other. And so so we place switch, switch one, and then we can actually place switch two here. Now, you, you see that there is this label here. Let's say you don't like this label. You can actually uh, remove those labels by, and this, you, you can do this by pushing this button and then uh, right there. And, and now, 
each uh, label has its own origin. And because of that, we can now delete each uh, label. So if, if you don't want a label, you can easily delete it. And so we're going to go ahead and connect um, all of the um, buttons. And if anyone has any questions uh, as I'm doing this, feel free to shout out. Um, one question that you might have is, I, wanna, I have a fancy logo for my senior design project. I want to include a logo on my board. How do I do that? Um, well, uh, you have these um, uh, programs that uh, that are created on um, on uh, in in Eagle, and one of the, one of these programs is a uh, bit masked uh, um, like a bit 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 mask uh, um, program where you can actually create like a, a an, you, you take an image, then you, you create like a bit mask, and then um, it generates this uh, all these polygons. And um, I wouldn't recommend doing it directly into a board because if you try to move uh, the the logo, uh, you actually end up moving all the individual. Um, polygons and it's it's very annoying so so what I recommend doing is is creating a symbol or creating a device I should say and and what you do is you create a symbol it could just be some text right and uh, you you maybe say oh this is my UNLV logo and so then, that's the symbol side of the of the um, uh, device. And then on the footprint side, that's where you do your bit mass program. And if you want the specifics of that, um, I'd recommend just Googling um, how, how do I put an image in, onto my board in Eagle. Um, now, the one thing that Google won't mention, or most of those tutorials online, is is creating a, a logo uh, device because uh, th that's the easiest way to, to to go about doing that. Because then you can easily move your logo around without having to do with all these polygons. Um, so, ha has anyone out there designed a printed circuit board? Yeah, um, for uh, CP301, you have to actually uh, design your own PCB for your, um, it's not Arduino, but it's like a, a embedded system. The app maybe? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, yeah, we, we all took that class, yeah. Yeah, we, we just <laughs> ended up recreating that the day that we... Yeah, the uh, no. Arduino oh, shield. Oh, what? Basically. Wow. That's that's awesome. And what software did you use? Uh, KiCad. Uh, we, KiCad. Yeah, KiCad or KiCad. It's just because it's free. And we can get it. Yeah. Without, without having to, like, you know, yeah, pay it. Yeah, it's pretty easy. I actually had a question about the, uh, the other design idea where uh, for this one, since um, everything's uh like if you since the system's mono um what if you replace all the resistor and with one uh voltage input with a sliding a potentiometer to make the uh uh like um what's what's that device like a, called like um yeah i know almost automaton. like automaton yeah yes. automaton yes would that, that be would... a valid design idea I think so. I, I think that'd be a really cool idea. You, you could have a, you could just replace all these buttons, right? Right. And with just one. Yeah. So I, I I really like that idea, and you could also have a like a a slider and then like a tuning pot. 
Right. So that way you could you could tune what what you want. So that's uh-huh. that's that's a really great idea. Now another interesting idea that I've had about this uh, circuit is. Um, is is maybe instead of having little switches, you could have a little transistor, uh, you know, in place of the switches, and then you could have like a little decoder, or maybe not have a decoder. Then you'd have a greater bus width, but then you could have your microcontroller send signals to the transistors, and then it would play a, a little tone. But that's probably just overly complex because they have those little piezo speak uh, speakers. Also, is there any um, um, shortcuts or like um, keys? Like key bindings. Yeah, oh, key yeah. bindings. Yeah. So, so that's that's one thing that sort of sucks about Eagle is. Oh, they don't have. They they don't have uh, great key bindings. Um, oh, it's 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 a um, it's a very graphical interface. Um, but when it comes to shortcuts, uh, e- one thing that Eagle has that not all uh, PCB design software has is uh, I mean there there are shortcuts, and I'm sure you could spend your time to. D- develop whatever key binding you wanted, but initially it seems that everything is is sort of going for the graphical way of doing things. But um, like shortcuts in uh, with regard to uh, uh, just just creating your PCB, uh, Eagle unlike maybe Free PCB and other Eagle, I mean other PCB software is that Eagle actually has auto route. And so you can actually uh, auto route your board. Um, and what, what I mean by auto route is uh, the traces would actually be um, would a- actually be uh, created automatically. Um, and we'll we'll get into uh, doing that once we uh, go through creating uh, some. Um, uh, traces manually. So what's what's the labs like uh, during COVID? Are, like, do they have in-person labs or? <laughs> <laughs> I watched a 30 minute demo video of a guy explaining the entire lab. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and a and really? lab report on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we no, don't do is... any of it ourselves. Well, maybe, maybe except like Baker's lab. But that's the only thing that's still in person. But, but most of it is done on cadence, anyways. This is one thing that is a little annoying. Sometimes <laughs> you you want to move something, but it just doesn't move, and so <laughs> we'll we'll come back to that. I I think it's because the See, it, you have to click that origin perfectly, otherwise it won't move. Yeah, or it's going to move the title of it or the name of it. Yeah. So all the labs are video-based now, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a joke, <laughs> to yeah. put it quite frankly. But uh, Yeah, definitely sure. not getting our That's money's worth. Of- it's kind of yeah. <laughs> that's just the way it goes. So what? Again, la- right what? So what labs are you taking this semester? If anyone's taking, I'm sure senior design sort of is similar to last year, last semester. Uh, I'm currently taking 450 for semiconductor physics uh, and 480 for uh, DSP. Right on. I am taking the 421, yeah, 421 lab. At, um, oh, well, 421. well, that's a lab that you can sort of do virtually. Yeah, it's it's all paid in. 
Oh no, yeah. no, you guys have it in person. You you are the better. You guys are having a better time than I am. Yeah, but the but the thing about like that class is like it's just mostly cadence. Like we, the only reason we even show up is just like to take the quiz. Um. Okay, so this is a. I'm not gonna spend all day trying to get this perfect, but this is this is our going to be our our PCB <laughs> layout for for this workshop. Um. And as as you can see here, you can actually spend quite some time uh, fine tuning everything and and making sure everything is is placed well. So this is <laughs> if 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 you had the time, you know, you could actually uh, make sure everything is is how you want it and make sure everything is perfect. But I, I just want to make sure that we get through everything that we need to get through, um, especially auto routing because that's it's a really nice feature. Okay, so let's move this um Also, another thing that's sort of good to know is um, if you have an IC, it's nice to have a, um, essentially like a, 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 a socket, an IC socket instead of soldering your I see directly into the board, and there's there's two advantages to that, and uh, the first advantage is that if you were to solder the um, I see directly into the board, you could actually accidentally uh, heat up the the heat up the the I see and destroy it, and so then when you then when you want to uh, get the PCB working, it can actually not work. And so uh, you, you solder the, 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 the socket in and then you can solder your, um, your I mean, then you can just place the IC directly into the socket. Um, and then obviously the next advantage to that approach is let's say you actually destroy your, your IC, uh, you can actually pull it out and put in another one so that's 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 a really nice advantage to doing that so now let's let's get into uh, drawing traces um, and so uh, you can actually grab this uh, tool here um, which is t -t 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 route air wire and uh, what we can do is we can go ahead and Route it now. Notice how thin it is. It's it's really thin. The width is six mils. Okay, so maybe let's go for um, let's maybe try fifteen. Is there a general standard that you try and follow uh, when you're actually doing PCB design? I know you have the the formulas and equations that you could actually apply to it, but um, just speaking generally, is there a, is there a, a guideline that you kind of follow in the in industry um well i i've never um designed a, like a pcb for like a company but I, I have designed pcbs for um like a research lab and mm -hmm. so what, what i would do then is i would just make sure that all the traces are as large as 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 they can be more into the um the board placement and so um okay so so we could do 15 mils it'd probably be fine but you know probably 40 mils would be okay um no i know you so, said the the total the total area is kind of what depend or what uh mm -hmm. uh determines the cost of it but it trace where do the trace lengths actually come into play at all or is that kind of just no. included in one and so, so, so it's the the total size of the board. So, so, so. What, okay. So what, it's only dependent what, on that. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So, so, so what okay. what costs money is 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 this dimension here? Okay. Okay. So, yep. so Just you, like the you can put. Yeah, yeah. You can put all you want to put on your board. You can have the a crazy density of components, but but the cost of the board is the okay. 
uh, is, is the dimension. Yep. yep. Gotcha. Okay. And so one thing that you sort of want to know uh, when you're doing this is uh, as we're drawing this out, notice we have the 120 degree um, uh, routing, right? If, if you want to do uh, a curve, we, we can do a curve, okay? Um, if you want to just have right angles, you can even do that. You can, uh, it, the, the choice is yours. Um, now, when, when you're uh, routing, you may run into a situation where um, you can't get to uh, a pin because there's a trace that's blocking it. So you can actually, if you have a mouse, you can click your scroll wheel and you have a via, and then next thing you know, you're on the opposite side of the board, and then you can, then 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 you can, uh, let's click a via, and then right there, and then we're on, we're back on the top. So, so that's that's a really good point to, to know, and you can actually adjust the size of the via if you right click the via. Uh, you you have uh, the drill, you have the size, you can have a square via, you can have a um, an octagon, and so um, you can uh, spend quite the time uh, routing every single signal. Um, for this this board here, uh, I manually routed all the signals. Um, but I also I also wanted to go about um, polygons, and so let's say we want to have um, okay. So I'm going to give you two options. We can either do um, two ground planes or a ground plane and a power plane. Which would you guys like to see? Yeah, that was actually my next question: is how do you even implement a ground plane? Yeah. Okay. So, so let's let's do a ground plane and a power plane, uh, Perfect, just yeah. just just so that way we we can see how how two polygons are are created. Um, but uh, if you do choose to do a ground plane in the ground plane, you don't want to just have a, a like a ground plane on the top layer and a ground plane on the bottom layer, and nothing connects them besides one pin. Uh, in a situation like that where you choose two ground planes is usually what I do is I pick a pretty large grid size, maybe like 200 mils, and then you can actually uh, turn on the display and then you just periodically place the, the ground planes. I mean, periodically place the, the vias. And so, for instance, here, um, I actually have two ground planes um, and this is this is actually a typo I'm sorry about that it's it's two ground planes and I even misspelled plane but <laughs> um, and so anyway notice the periodic vias they're connecting the two ground planes um, so but since we're doing a ground plane and the power plane obviously you wouldn't want to short the two so how do we actually go about creating a plane or creating a po any polygon for that matter. Um, what we can do is there's a polygon tool, okay? Uh, and also, I should have mentioned this earlier, but as you're placing the components and everything, you can actually hit this rat nest button, which actually finds the, the optimized uh, pin that this should connect to. Um, and so, uh, here we're going to grab our polygon and uh, notice that we're, we have the top layer selected, okay? And so what that means is that um, we're going to have a top layer polygon. And so we're actually going to draw this off the board. And this may seem weird, but you'll you'll see um, in, in the instance... Uh, what uh, we're, we're doing here. Now, before we do this, I just want to make sure we should look switch over to the schematic. 
And notice that the VDD is VDD and VDD is GND. Just wanted to make sure that that, that was the, the what I used. And so um, uh, we're going to create the polygon. And we're going to basically surround the board. And the, this little window pops up. And let's say we want to have the top be the, the power plane. So we type in VDD, OK? And then we push OK. And uh, we, we have a polygon that's created. Now, you're like, wait, I don't see it. So what you can actually do is you can hit this rat nest. And as you can see here, um, Every single pin that should be connected to VDD is connected to VDD. And so, um, so does it make like a global VDD and then like global ground and all of that stuff? Could you repeat that? <laughs> uh, maybe my internet's bad, but um, this actually makes like global VDD and global ground, right? Yeah, so it's, you have a global VDD and a global ground. And, and, and uh, also a, a note that, I, that there should be made is if you look at the pin here, if you use um, software like DipTrace, um, DipTrace doesn't do this, um, I don't believe, um, because I've had a couple of friends that have used dip trace and uh, if, if we look at this pin here do, do, do you see how technically the copper could just go right through this entire thing right and we don't need these little cutouts of, 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 of copper um, and let's say we were to have no cutouts and then we try to solder uh, our resistor to this pin we would have to you know, heat this entire plane, there's all this metal, and it, 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 it's a pain to solder that. And so um, these little um, automatic uh, cutouts of, of copper is, is very nice because uh, you, um, instead of heating up everything immediately, like uh, there, there's less of a path for conduction. And so um, it's easier to heat heat up and solder. So so that, that's, that's one point that should be noted. And then let's say that we want to have uh, a ground plane. We follow the exact same um, th uh, method that we did. Oh, but except we want to have it on the bottom. Now, this is an important thing here. That this is all the different layers uh, that uh, can be used. Uh, you can have uh, cream if 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 you uh, want want to. Uh, put it into an oven. Um, you can have, uh, they actually have these little stencils that you can put onto a PCB and then you put this cream um, over the stencil and then the, like the this, this cream only goes where uh, the cream should go and then you can place um, the SMD components onto the um, uh, where, where they should go onto the footprints and then you can put it into the oven and then it melts the cream and every that's so so if you're gonna do something like that and you're gonna have a stencil then then that's that's what that's for um, so so you can actually go through here and uh, you know, go through all the different layers now not all these layers are important um, because Ultimately, when we create our Gerbers, um, we're going to select what layers go to what Gerber. And so, um, for instance, sometimes you can have um, like a dimension, or let's say uh, you have um, you have uh, like an off chip, I mean, an off board uh, component that that jets out. Uh, this way, then uh, you can actually have it, you know, documented with with um, some sort of arbitrary layer, and then you can see the dimensions of what's jetting out. But then, ultimately, you don't include it in your Gerber's. So we clicked bottom, 
and then we go to the polygon and we, we just go ahead and draw and we select G and D okay and then uh, we hit ratness and BAM we have uh, a ground and a um, VDD um, layer and so now the, the question then is what do we do now and so what we do is uh, we can actually flip the board um, if you want to see one side or the other side um, and so that's interesting and then uh, we can hit ratness and go to the top layer and there we see our uh, our one trace that we drew now let's say we want to do auto wrap um, so what we do is we uh, click this uh, button here called auto router and um, so here we have top and bottom so note that both top and bottom are selected um, route two route three that's if you had uh, multiple layers so let's say you had a four layer piece but we only have we only want two layers um, and so you can actually uh, set how many because uh, the computer actually oh, before we do this it's actually sort of fun to to see the although routing algorithm complete um, and so if you have a really complex board um, sometimes uh, you need it requires a lot of computation uh, to to make all the connections um, so you can actually select how what kind of effort uh, is used by your computer to 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 make all the the routing and so now we uh, go to we, we select continue and um, as we can see here there's going to be 22 options that are created um, and so we're just going to hit start and it's going to go through and oh look at that do you see do you see what what's going on there uh, do you see how thin these uh, traces are we don't want that so we hit cancel um, and so we actually uh, have to go to um, classes. Uh, let's see. Okay, so so we're gonna have to go to net classes. This is it, right here. And so uh, we're going to go to rules and you see default, those, <laughs> all those traces that were created automatically had a width of zero mils. Okay. So, so, so <laughs> they had no width whatsoever. So um, let's, let's choose 40. We should be able to get by with that. Um, and so, um, to to someone mentioned earlier how do we know uh that our pcb can be manufactured by um whatever company we choose well the the drill and the clearance is something that you'll want to look up uh and you'll want to make sure that um you select the values that are appropriate but generally 10 mils on each is manufacturable and so we hit okay and so now that we have that default class, now we can actually go to the auto router and uh, we can uh, go for a new job and hit continue. So it goes through. And let's hit start. N notice right off the bat, uh, looks like 36% is complete due to the 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 ground and power vias. So you can actually see 
my computer is freezing up. Okay, so it's it's still generating all the different options. And um, interestingly, uh, this percentage here represents um, how many connections were made. And so let's say you have a really small board and, and everything is uh, really densely packed. Auto router may be unable to connect everything. And so, um, for instance, with with a board like um, with a board like this, this was a really small board, and I uh, had a, a ground and power plane, and I used auto router to to sort of get a basis of um, how I wanted to route everything. And all options for for a complex board like this um, did not result in 100% connection. And so then you have to manually go in there and make sure everything is connected. And so all the rather is good, but it's not as good as a human. Um, and so um, in addition to that, when you do use other rather, um, I'd recommend um, going through and maybe making some adjustments and making sure that everything is up, 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 up to par with what you want. And so you can go through here and you can actually select which variant you want. Um, and so you could spend time studying which one is best for, for, for your application. Let's just choose the first one. And uh, we go ahead and do uh, evaluate. And uh, then we hit uh, rat nest. And right off the bat, uh, every single node is connected. Now, uh, we don't have to worry about the power trace width, right? Because our, our, uh, we have the power plane uh, in the ground planes. And so everything that is connected is uh, are our signals. Now, of course, we do have this here that's coming from the, the barrel jack. So we could actually uh, click the trace. We can go to info. Uh, there we go. And you can actually, no, I think it's, yeah, you can, you can actually select Let's see if, there we go. So you can go to properties and you can select the width of your trace. So let's say you want this trace to be uh, 50, okay? Then you can, you can do that. And So oh, you can go ahead and go through and make sure everything is up up to how you want it. And um, looks like that was not. Looks like. Yeah. So so you can you can spend your time <laughs> uh, making sure everything is up to how you want it. And then let's say you want to put your name on the board or, or, or um, you want to put UNLV on the board or you want to say that, hey, this is the power switch, then uh, you can go to this layer here and you can, I, I usually do T names or T place or T values. You can select any one of these layers and um, then you can uh, go to uh, the text and let's say, um, I triple E UNLV workshop 2020. Um, and we can actually place that right here. Oh, and it looks like we misspelled UNLV. What a crime. Um, uh, and so, and so uh, you can put your name on there. You can, you can do if if you want um, something on the bottom. Um, you can select uh, B place, okay, 
and uh, you can type what you want and notice that the text is going to be backwards if you want to see what it looks like you can uh, flip the board and then that's what the bottom board looks like um, and so let's flip the board again you can select um, what layers are visible uh, here and so our, our board is technically complete and so um, of course it's not the most optimized board but it, it would most likely work um, and so uh, we want to manufacture it and we want to make sure that uh, it passes uh, both DRC uh, and there's uh, let's see okay so he, oh my goodness oh there we go and so so here's ERC and this is uh, checking to make sure that there are no errors and so so we can actually expand this window out and it says error pin IC V plus connected to VDD part scenario 5 has no value Th these are just warnings and uh, has no visual connection like label segments are on the same net but um, these warnings can be approved uh, you want to make sure that all the warnings are are okay now one one warning or error that um, can be an issue is if the board and the schematic are not consistent um, and that's if if you delete uh, an air wire or if you make a connection that isn't made on the um, schematic um, in a situation like that um, you'll have um, a huge yellow black and yellow line that will just pop up here you won't miss it and it will say um, board uh, and and schematic are not consistent or Sometimes it says the connection uh, between the board and the schematic has been severed. In a situation like that, you'll probably want to figure out what happened, hit Control Z or Apple Z, and uh, figure out what uh, caused there to be a board schematic inconsistency. Um, another error that you have to watch out for that didn't occur this time, uh, but it occurred the last time I gave a workshop. And so sometimes, uh, let's say that, um, let's say that um, you had like a, a, a ground connection, like right here, okay? Or um, I think our top layer was VDD, right? Yeah, so, so let's say that this pin right here is needs to be connected to VDD okay and notice that the that the um, that the VDD plane cannot uh, be filled here right because um, of of the constraints that we gave it uh, with that default layer and so um, what you would have to do in a situation like that is you would have to grab a via and place it right here okay and you would then you would then uh, you would you would adjust the value with here and you would you would say that the that the value is um, is is VDD so since we don't need to do that uh, we can remove that via so now uh, let's go ahead and uh, create our Gerbers and so what we do for that is we go to file export no we go to the cam processors and this says your design has changed save your design now the cam output will be based on the saved version and so yes and so this is our cam processor and 
CAM in this context refers to computer aided uh, manufacturing. And so here's the top copper layer, okay? And notice uh, there was around a couple hundred layers here, but uh, the, the layers that affect the, the, the top copper layer are uh, defaulted to top pads and vias. You can actually go to edit the layers and you can select different uh, layers that you want included in the top copper layer. Here's the bottom copper. Um, here's the profile. Here's the solder top. Uh, here's the solder mass bottom. Uh, here's the solder paste top. Uh, so solder paste bottom, silk screen top, uh, silk screen bottom. Um, and so you can uh, go ahead and uh, adjust these, these uh, layers here. And then what you'll want to do is um, you'll want to um, make sure that everything is up to spec. And here's the auto drill. Here's the build materials. Here's the pick and place. And so then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to process the job. And uh, we're going to select uh, a folder that it's going to uh, go to, and we'll type in Gerber. Great. And open. And so let's process the job. Okay. And so we can we can go to oh, oh, Siri. We can go to uh, our desktop. And we can go to Gerber's. Here's our CAM outputs. Here's our drill files, our Gerber files, and our assembly files. And so the cool thing is uh, you can actually get a, a bill of materials automatically generated uh, right here that can aid your soldering that explains all the different parts that you need, um, the, the values, the descriptions, uh, everything that you need. Um, but in order to create a, um, a, a, a compressed zipped folder that can be interpreted by um, the PCB company, we can actually create a new folder here and we can type in piano final. And we can actually go into the, the drill files and copy this. Um, I haven't used IO, Mac OS in a while. Duplicate? So, uh, or yeah, dupli yeah, duplicate, yep. Duplicate. Oh, so we can actually drag this into here. And so then we can go to our Gerber files. Here. and um, copy 10 items and then go to the piano final and paste 10 items. And so, so now we have this. And so now what we can do is we can compress this, this file. You, you wanna make sure, uh, where is the compress? Quick action, oh yep, right there. Sorry about that, I'm used to Windows. And so now what we can do is we can go to, um, let's say Osh Park, okay? And you can actually um, down, you can upload an Eagle board file or you can up, uh, upload the zip. Um, not, not all PCB companies will um, upload, will, will allow you to upload an Eagle file, but we're gonna upload this zip uh, file right there. It's gonna figure out if uh, our design matches uh, what they can uh, fabricate, and if there's any issues, they will uh, indicate them. And um, 
couldn't find a drill file. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, there was a drill file, but but um, you can you can <laughs> figure that out and and make sure that the uh, let's see here the drill. Oh, it could be due to the naming of that. Yeah, let's let's move that to the trash. Copy piano file. There we go. There we go. So we have uh, the piano final zip. And so now uh, what we can do is we can just go back and, oh. And upload our design. There we go. So it's just a file naming issue. And you can actually continue and <laughs> make an account and go through all the layers. But um, so a two layer board of this size, right? The, the as defined by those di dimensions will cost uh, $40 for three boards. So if, if you have any questions, final questions, you can ask me. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for um, yeah. this in-depth uh, PCV workshop. Yeah. Yeah, it's surely been a wonderful presentation. Be... Yeah. My senior it's design, this great. is definitely happening. I'll tell you that much. I'm actually excited about it. So Yeah. And 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 honestly, uh Eagle software isn't you know that difficult to use, but if if you don't, mm -hmm. if, you don't yeah. if you don't have someone like guiding, you know, you uh, through like all the ropes and everything, it can be a little difficult, but should should be easy. No, much oh, yeah. better than probably any YouTube tutorial I could find. So I, I yeah. really do appreciate yeah. it. This is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Also, for this sure. is recorded, so um, I'm gonna. It's gonna be the link will be sent to every participant, so you could even put this in your website if you okay. want to reuse it for the later time. For sure, thank yeah, you. Awesome. All right, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm definitely Thanks gonna use this to make uh, a yeah. automaton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you coming back and out. Being out in the industry and being graduated is a little different story for you to actually have to come back and teach us all the uh, all the tricks and secrets of the trade. So appreciate it. Yeah, well, like um, for for my job, I I, I uh, mainly use Cadence, and so um, mm. that's a, that's a whole other <laughs> ball game. Um, 